If you need to collect electronic signatures, I have good news. Google Docs has a brand new feature that lets you insert signature fields right into your document, keeping your workflow all inside of Google Drive. Let's check it out. Hi, my name is John Sawash. I help teachers and students use Google tools in the classroom. I have a sample proposal here that needs a signature. And before I had to use an external tool or get a ink signature and scan and upload, it was a hassle. But now Google has a brand new signature field feature. Now, before we check this out, a couple of important notes. Number one, this is a premium feature that will require Google Workspace for Education Plus or um, Business uh, Plus, whichever version um, you have access to. Um, in order for this to happen, a couple things need to happen. Number one, your IT administrator will need to make sure that you have a license assigned to your account. Um, and I'll link to a video on my other YouTube channel if you're a Google admin for how to do that, manage your licenses. And then secondly, the e-signature field or feature does need to be enabled from the Google admin console. It's very easy to do. It is enabled by default. So unless someone's gone in there and actually turned it off, um, it should be available. Now, how do you know if you have a license? Well, easiest way is to click on a Google Doc, open up a doc, insert, and do you see signature fields? If you see it, then you have a license and you're ready to go. If you don't have it, let me demo it for you. Um, show you how to use it. And this might be a reason to upgrade to Workspace for Education Plus. You're gonna save the money for whatever you're currently using. Um, and put your workflow right here inside of Google Docs. So I need two signatures, my signature and then Dwight's signature as well, accepting this proposal. So I've got my proposal. You can do a new document, existing document, insert signature fields. And the first thing I need to do is define my signer. So I've got an old one in here. So my name, and then we'll add Dwight root as well. You can have up to 10 signers in a single document. We're not going to add email addresses. We'll do that in a little bit. Now you have the ability to add the following fields to your document, obviously signature, initials, name, a blank text field where you can instruct them to type whatever they want, and then date signed. So let me go ahead and add several of these. Obviously we want signature um, and I want name and then also date signed. So that's going to be for me. Let me go ahead and center these in that column. And then over here, I'm going to switch to Dwight, his fields. Uh, we'll center these as well and insert signature, name, and date signed. That's it. That's how easy it is to set it up. Um, and you can add multiple places within the document if you need different signatures and in initials. Um, on multiple pages. Once I've got that finished, I'm going to click request e-signature. And this is when I begin entering emails. Add a note if uh, necessary um, to say when you need the signature, what it's for. Um, and we're going to click send. I'm going to go ahead and send that. Now, when I send the e-signature, it's going to create a PDF of this document. The PDF is static and cannot be changed. Obviously, one of the concerns that people would have is because Google Docs are so easy to edit and change, what's going to prevent you from requesting a signature and then changing the contents. We're signing the PDF. If I make any changes to this proposal, the PDF does not get uploaded. I would need to cancel the signature request and resend it with any changes that have been made. Let's go ahead and sign into Dwight's account and see what this will look like. So you're going to get an email. This does not need to be a Google account. Uh, it could be any any account. You're just going to get an email from the originator, which is me. Click open. You're going to see the PDF. Obviously, you can read through it. And the fields that are assigned to Dwight to sign will be editable. So I'll click. Um, this does not require a touch screen. You're going to adopt um, a digital representation of your signature. Enter the signature and initials and adopt and sign. Um, enter the name as well. And there we go. So date, name, and then signature. This part is important and it's easy to forget. It looks like you've signed it, but you do need to click the mark complete button. 
in order for that signature to actually be you know assigned i'll click agree and that signature is now done um, i'm going to log in to my email and i will get i'll have two emails one indicating that the signature request has been sent to everybody and another one for me uh, to sign i'll go ahead and sign mine There we go, up to sign, name, and mark is complete. Now the e-signature process has been completed because everybody has signed the document. And so all signees will receive a final version of the document that indicates um, that it's been signed. And then I will also, just got it. So um, here is, it says signature is complete. And here's the final PDF. Not only will I see all the signatures, but it does also add an audit trail that indicates exactly when everybody signed it, confirming their email address. Uh, according to Google's help documentation, this process is a legally enforceable e-signature in both the United States and the European Union, and it does adhere to Adobe's uh, secure signature process as well. I'll link to that uh, information so you can check it out. Now, a couple of uh, notes as I've been using this for my own uh, process. Um, this file does get uploaded to Google Drive, but it's a little annoying because it just goes into the root folder. Uh, it doesn't go into the same folder that the original document was created in, which I think is annoying. I hope Google will fix that at some point. I think the, the finished PDF should go right next to, you know, the document that I created. So that's one thing to be aware of. I always have to manually move that PDF um, into one of my subfolders. The other thing to be aware of at this time, there's no like automation. So if you need to send out hundreds of documents for signatures for you know parents or students to sign, um, there's no way to like do a, a mail merge into um, the signature fields. I do anticipate at some point Google will add that, but right now that's not a feature. So this is primarily for individual documents being sent to an individual uh, person. Um, if you need other solutions, more automation, uh, one thing to look at is one of the extensions. So um, if I'm in a document, go to extensions, add-ons. Um, this is where you'll see integrations with some of the popular um, options for signatures like DocuSign and HelloSign. And this may give you the option of automating, you know, bigger projects where you need lots of signatures um, in more of your workflow. Um, this process, the e-signatures, is primarily for external signatures. So you're sending it out to a third party, a parent, a student, uh, you know, a vendor, something like that. Google does have a separate feature called document approvals, which is for internal approval of a document before it gets you know, published. Uh, this allows you to specify you know, members of your organization who need to sign off on a handbook or a parent newsletter before it is sent out. Everybody approves it. It's not signing it, you're just approving it. Once everybody's approved it, it locks the document for editing so that you know this is the final approved version. Uh, that's a separate feature from e-signatures, but hopefully the two combination of those two and the add-ons will give you an e-signature solution uh, that you can utilize. If you enjoy Google Workspace tips like this, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. I'm always sharing ways that you can use Google products to improve teaching and learning in your classroom.